I took engineering More to technical more engineering More to technical engineering And now yeah. you're doing pharmacy Yeah <laughs> Okay okay guys First question dah tahu dah How did you change From engineering to uh, pharmacy <laughs> Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of MSU Talk Podcast. I'm Imran, your host, and today's episode is very special, especially for those who have just finished their SPM. Huh. I, we understand that this is a pivotal moment for both students and family because this marks the end of their second education, secondary education, and the beginning of an exciting journey for higher education and future careers. We, under, we understand that this transition can be challenging. So that's exactly what we are here to talk about today. We have, an, we, have a, we have an exciting lineup of panelists here to share about all their experiences, all their insights. So please stay tuned and hope that you learn a thing or two on what it's all about here at Management and Science University. So without further ado, let's dive into our first guest. Now, I'm thrilled to introduce our very first panel, our guest, Mr. Sharol, who is one of our esteemed academic counsellors here in MSU Engage of Management and Science University. Mr. Sharol is well-versed in our programs and courses and will help us understand the various academic pathways available after SPM. Welcome to the show, Mr. Sharol. Hi, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Sharol, how are you? Ah, great. I'm great. Well, are you ready? Yes, Okay, I so am. first and foremost, let's just talk about the overview of MSU. All right, so thank you so much, uh, Imran. And hi, everyone. Okay, my name is Sharul. So basically, Management and Science University at MSU INI, uh, our university located in Shah Alam, Selangor. Of course, everyone knows about it. And if you want to know more about us, actually, you can visit on our social media platforms we have in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere, you can name it. Just search MSU Malaysia. But if you want to come and visit our campus, please do so. We are open every day, seven days per week, yeah? Monday to Sunday. Uh, you can visit us, especially uh, in MSU Engage. We have a lot of uh, academic counselors who can help you to guide you. Uh, I mean, you can get more information about the programs, uh, scholarships, financial assistance. Even you can have a private tour to our campus let's say you want to visit our anatomy museum you can visit our fashion museum oh, sorry fashion gallery you can visit our lab libraries so do not hesitate to come and visit us and you can call us at 0355216868 to make an appointment with our academic counsellors and the best thing about Management and Science University is you can choose the program uh, according to your passion uh, to your interests and based on your results definitely uh, oh sorry uh, first and foremost I would like to congratulate to all SPM 2023 candidates yeah, for whatever results that you all dapat yeah 1A, 2A, 3A, tak A pun it's okay uh, because the Management and Science University we have a special pathway for everyone uh, for example if you have interest in education or in arts or in science or in engineering uh, it depends on you so we as academic counsellor will guide you and give you the best options according to your passion and also at the same time based on your SPM results mm. uh, because in MSU in Management and Science University we have more than 150 programs to choose on from medical uh, dentistry right up to uh, fashion music uh, technology even to interior design sports science and lots more so uh, I think as an introduction to everyone who are watching this uh, please contact us now uh, at 0355216868 and our academic counselor sedang menantikan anda yes alright all right. so uh, ni the excitement energy I want ni yeah. tadi I lembek lho pada dengan Syarul cakap this is the real host of yeah. MSU <laughs> ok so now we're going to jump right into the first question ok, okay. so Mr. Yeah. Syarul we have a lot of programs right let's start with the most basic foundation programs what okay. is that like ok usually the students from SPM uh, they have a few options yeah we got PRIU or okay. Diploma so when we talk about PRIU University program in Management and Science University we have foundation this foundation program is unique this program duration is only 12 months let's say you start this program in July okay. you will finish this program next year July ah. so by August or September you can already pursue your bachelor 
journey. Okay. All right. So I would say fast track. And second option is diploma. Diploma is two and a half years or three years, depending on the diploma you are doing. Uh, for example, if you are doing something to related in science, like diploma in nursing, definitely three years. If you are doing something related to management, two and a half years, inclusive uh, the internship. So the big question is, where should I go? Where ah, should foundation I foundation or diploma? So actually, it depends. If you want to do something uh, skill based related, I would say diploma is more suitable for you. Uh, something like, for example, eh, uh, you want to do something in nursing or in graphic design or in the culinary art, patisserie. So diploma is the best option for you because mm. you will have a lot of skill uh, during your diploma program. Mm. Uh, but foundation, it is for some way you want to do some uh, like professional uh, in a faster way. Mm. For example, you want to go for MBBS, Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. So the best option for you is foundation in health science, for example. Or mm. you want to do engineering, mechanical engineering or computer engineering. Foundation in IT or foundation in engineering is for you. I Actually, see. can you run? Yes. Uh, in MSU, we have a lot of options uh, for foundations. We have more than seven program actually. Foundation in law, foundation in business, foundation in IT, foundation in engineering, foundation in visual arts, foundation in business, and foundation in health science. So we have seven programs uh, that you can choose from depending on the faculty that you want to go after that. Those who are excellent in SPM, who got main, uh, who managed to get uh, minimum five A's and above, actually, I have good news today. Uh, you can apply for our Yayasan MSU scholarship. I see. Ah, so the thing about our Yayasan MSU is not only for those who are excellent in academic, but also we can offer to those who are excellent in curriculum. For example, Imran, you yes. are uh, uh, representing your school for uh, bola sepa or pantun. Sp- or sports lah. Uh, like no, not only sports. Eh? Or you, let's say you represent your school for pantun, for debate. Still, you can get our Yayasan MSU scholarship. I see. Uh, and ja- what category is that? Huh? Uh, we have a lot of category actually under Yayasan MSU. We have SCORE, S-C-O-R-E. We have MORE, M-O-R-E. Uh, so this scholarship program, um, I would say is quite interesting mm-hmm. because it's totally different from other scholarship outside because we are offering this scholarship not only for those B40 or M40 people but also to everyone actually as long as you are excellent in academic and also excellent in curriculum I see. Uh, sebab ramai orang fikir oh scholarship ni mesti orang susah je no uh, ah. not not in MSU not uh, that that's not our indicator so we want to help those students who are excellent in academic and also in uh, curriculum uh, tak kisah latar belakang you all macam mana Uh, so everyone can get our Yayasan MSU scholarship I see uh. Okay so uh, I understand that There are many programs In foundation Can you repeat again One more time uh, Programs Foundation in law, law Foundation in business Foundation in engineering mm-hmm. Foundation in IT Foundation in health science Foundation in visual arts Mm-hmm. And foundation in education, education, Tassel. foundation Tassel. Education, education Tassel. Oh, uh-huh. and then there's the new one, right? Yes. The foundation in uh, liberal arts. No, it's like yes, that's coming soon. Yeah. yeah, inshallah. Okay. So right. Okay. So let's jump on to the next one. Since okay. we talk about the foundations, what about the diploma specifically oh, that you right. like famous right now? Because people true. sekarang ni suka true. trending. Sharo, they macam saya nak belajar benda yang orang belajar lah. Yes. What yes. are they? What's so famous Actually, now? a lot of influencers. Ah, oh, I like yeah. that. A lot of influencers are looking for diploma program, especially like multi media mm. uh, like uh, in graphic designs because not only that they uh, dapat skill on video editing dan sebagainya uh, diploma ini juga sebenarnya also memberikan you option tau selepas habis diploma tu you can work directly after diploma or you can continue your bachelor journey afterwards so the best thing about diploma is if let's say you finish your diploma after three years you continue your degree level after that you straight away to the second year of your degree program yes Ah, that's the best thing lah sebab yang rasanya pelajar-pelajar diploma ni tak perasan is diorang ingat habis diploma or straight away to the career kerja lah macam tu tapi sebenarnya if they continue their bachelor program actually uh, mereka akan terus dapat pengecualian the exemption is mostly one year in MSU uh, one year exemption so that they can jump straight away to the second year of the bachelor program later on 
Ah, then the best thing about MSC punya diploma is semua ada internship. Ha, ah, betul. macam foundation uh, we don't have internship for foundation because it takes only one year, 12 months eh. True. But for diploma, uh, yes, all diploma in MSU we have internship program. Then you boleh dapat banyak exposure from there. Oh, okay, hmm. so our our guest audience out there. So if you guys are very excited and eh, nak masuk foundation ke diploma ke banyak opportunities ada dekat sini. Yeah. Betul. Uh, uh, maybe kita boleh macam buat summary sikit foundation hmm. one year, diploma tiga year, tiga tahun. Hmm. Uh, so it depends. Uh, you nak one year punya fast track cepat habis bachelor or you nak buat tiga tahun dengan skill base banyak banyak skill ada internship and then bila ke degree. Terus ke tahun yang kedua So Itu pilihan yang ada di Management and Science University Good that you appointed that way uh, Cheryl hmm. Because hmm. Usually dalam kita punya segment MSU yeah. Talk ni uh, hmm. Our segment ni We usually have At the end We have questions From our social media That okay. we've asked before <laughs> uh, So Now because we have a lot of panels uh, uh. Kita Kena selitkan this question now uh. Or not Nanti lepas ni tak sempat The uh. thing Imran hmm. Actually That's why you need The academic counsellor yes, Sebab Kita akan custom Your study pathway According to your passion To your your results family background do you need the financial assistance how about the scholarship because uh, as an academic counselor all these elements is very important uh, sebab ramai orang tak perasan ni sebagai uh, selepasan SPM ni mereka kena memikirkan semua faktor-faktor ini mm. uh, dari segi macam mana saya ni seorang yang macam mana introvert ke extrovert ke so from there actually guys if you are watching this do not hesitate to contact us at MSU Engage di Management and Science University I will guide you till the end uh, sampailah ke peringkat Master or PhD okay so like one of the questions that I remember that the social media ask kan dia cakap kan Uh, my friend is taking foundation okay. I want to take diploma okay. Sekarang ni Which one is better Sharon? <laughs> That is like That's what we've been Summarizing tadi All right. Macam, Okay oh. The thing is There's no such thing As foundation is better Than diploma Or diploma is better Than foundation It's no such thing hmm. Because I think both are great Yeah Yeah uh, Again, it depends on you, uh, your your character, your your results, and also your passion. Uh, if you want to become a chef, diploma is the best option for you. Mm-hmm. If you want to become uh, a medical doctor or a dentist, a foundation is better for you because after foundation, straight away to the MBBS. Uh, the first year and so on lah jadi macam saya katakan tadi sebenarnya tidak ada istilah oh foundation is better than diploma or diploma is better than foundation it just a matter of diri sendirilah hmm. uh, you want to choose which area yang you nak join later on that's why you need the academic counselor to help and guide you uh, we do not tentukan untuk you no 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 we just give you the advice and prepare the packages the pathway and then you and your family can decide later on understood so <laughs> all right Good good word You say the parents kan Because ah, second question is, is Okay I I know what I want to study But then okay. He didn't say here lah kan uh-huh. I know what I want to study <laughs> But my parents Have their own ideas So yes. what can How can I convince them And oh What should I Tell them You know Some kind of strategy That can help them Be with me Okay, okay, okay. The thing is I think um, This is what we call um, Okay lah Communikasi Conflict in communication Where We have a generation gap Huh? Macam generasi X versus generasi Z eh? Millennial versus this Y, Z and so on lah So uh, I think as a parents Sebagai ibu bapa juga Bukan saya nak kata you should listen to your children Not 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 necessary you should listen to them Because pelajar-pelajar pun kadang-kadang Dia orang ada limitation of information eh? Tetapi pada masa yang sama juga Kita kena mendengar side mereka juga Because at the end of the day this is their life Alright so I think the best option untuk pelajar yang menanyakan soalan ini tadi ialah to bring your parents and yourself to our campus and we sit and discuss with academic counselor because as an academic counselor we will listen both parties and at the same time we will give you options and solutions untuk kita mencapai kata putus uh, sebab memang I ada jumpa Imran Mak ayah doktor Nak anak jadi doktor Tapi anak nak jadi chef Ada je kes-kes macam tu Tetapi at the end of the day Kita mencapai kata sepakat Selalunya uh, Tak ada istilah Saya menang dia kalah Tidak ada No such thing Actually at the end of the day We want everyone happy With the decision Because uh, We are talking about Someone's life uh, 
uh, the future. So, di uh, akhirnya nanti, what is it that you really want to do for the rest of your life? Uh, jadi, I think this is where it's very important as a parents and also as a students for you to like listen uh, everyone's punya opinion and then uh, as an academic counselor, kita juga akan memberikan cadangan. From there, you decide what is the best for your future. Sebab ada case eh, pelajar tu dah hampir nak habis belajar, baru dia sedar, dia tak minat bidang tu. Oh, uh, dekat MSU, kita tak nak macam tu. Because in MSU, our tagline apa dia? Transforming lives and, and reaching future. future. Uh, so, we want transform you and enriching your future based on pendidikan. Dengan pendidikan yang kita berikan dapat mengubah masa depan anda. Alright, so that is the end of our first session with Mr. Sharo. Mr. Right. Sharo, hmm. any final words to our audience out there? Okay, uh, kepada semua pelajar-pelajar SPM 2023 yang dah dapat result whoever you are yang sedang menonton ini uh, do not hesitate to call us uh, again in MSU Engage Management and Science University at 0355216868 uh, boleh cakap terus dengan saya pun boleh Encik Syarul uh, boleh jumpa dengan saya we are open every day setuju hari seminggu and uh, kami akan membimbing dan membantu anda mencapai apa jua yang anda impikan di masa hadapan thank you Mr. Syarul so now on to our next panel which is Associate Professor Dr. Uy Buing Kiet, a scholar, a researcher, a licensed counsellor and our lecturer in the School of Education and Social Sciences from Management and Science University. Dr. Uy okay, is here to discuss on how students can adjust and adapt to university life, particularly here at Management and Science University. Welcome, Dr. Uy. How are you? Good, thank you, Imran. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thank How are you? you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. I'm good. Doctor, right. Doctor, yang tanya saya, because he's the counselor, betul lah. Reverse lah. <laughs> uh, okay, sir, Doctor. Now we mm-hmm. just now we have a session with uh, Mr. Sharo right. from MSU Engage, okay. and he already hooked. Now there, semua budak-budak ni dah ready nak masuk. All right. Here's the thing, Doctor. Okay. This is their first semester. This is their first year. They're feeling it already. They're okay. feeling the anxiety, the bit of stress here and there. What should they do? Especially for new students, um, young living in the city like Shah Alam, uh, they might not be so affected. But for students who are coming from, um, you know, uh, not from the city, uh, probably they will have situations of like homesick mm. or like uh, cultural shock, you know because of different environment meeting different people and then also they have to face the different learning system you know uh, in in university is unlike what they do at school so these are the challenges that they will be facing i see mm. so like how how can they adapt to that new life especially those who are very what we say like uh, like very social very uh, friend oriented dulu like they always go with their clique now he is the only one or he or she is the only one studying here yeah. the rest are not here yeah. what should they do okay good questions i think uh, this is very much related to the programs at msu mm. not the academic program only we have many other programs also so students are advised to engage with the um, you know the so called non academic program So they have to make themselves active, you know. Uh, don't make themselves, uh, you know, too free. When an individual is too free, they will they tend to think of some many other things which is not academic related and also not be able to make them uh, productive and uh, active. So I think it's good to participate in many programs, activities in the campus, make them active, you know. So from there, they make new friends. They learn lots of things and also through experiential learning and uh, this supposed to be helping them uh, to adjust better in in campus life mm. uh, from your track records lah sir uh, dr Wei, of course you can name mm. you cannot put names there mm. but uh, if like student come and ask for your help like the first year students uh, mm. what is the usually the common challenges that they've come to you with sir? um usually students come to us is because of uh, stress you know the academic stress Um, interpersonal relationship issue um, yeah <laughs> for sure the interpersonal uh, yeah. relationship wow. <laughs> uh, who knows you know okay. uh, when uh, they come sometimes they come together you see so uh, I think these are the challenges lah. but for other than that there will be like uh, normal stress you know sometimes stress is not related 
to academic also students tend to have uh, developed from maybe peer the pressure from peers and etc you know so um, these are the so called um, issues also when uh, I meet students mm, right understood mm. so like um, since we have established a few of their challenges and like things that they have to adapt with right mm. what are the like any is there any like uh, support that they can do or like you know that is provided here management center yeah 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 in fact uh, at msu we have a mentoring system so every students are assigned with one mentor and mentor advise them in terms of academic and sometimes non academic also so uh, in the mentoring group in fact students have to build up trust uh, with the mentor and that is one thing so mentoring system is very important so called system supporting uh, students campus life another thing is we have also professional counselor at our campus they are licensed and they are registered counselor qualified counselor so uh, if you don't think that you are comfortable meeting your mentee or or you are meeting your mentor to to express your issue you can meet a professional uh, uh, counselor also right but most importantly i think is good for the students to build up a social support friendship you know uh, peers uh, support group and etc so if informally they can get supports when they are facing stress and uh, problems in their uh, life or in in campus life lah i see all right so like huh so like even if they don't wish to like you know like express them from their you know peers they can go to our professional counselors True. Uh, okay okay mm-hmm. so there you go students if you are concerned about anything uh, including interpersonal relationship or your academic uh, problems or not even non academic you can drop by and right. talk and especially you have to talk right isn't right, it right the importance of what's what uh, nowadays we say letting it all out isn't it right so okay on to the next question dr okay, okay so this is a very interesting question Uh, this is actually a uh, part two. Sharul got the same question as well. Okay. Actually, it's actually what advice uh, the the parent the the student asks this future student asks like I have difficulty communicating with my parents mm. in regards to the cause of my choice. Mm. What should I do? I think because personally I have a daughter also. Ah. My daughter, you know, <laughs> just uh, completed the uh, SPM. Ah, oh, congratulations! Yeah, thank you. And uh, we need to communicate. We need to communicate because sometimes uh, communication have to be two ways in order to be effective. As I say, conflicts happen when the communication is one way. So um, maybe from the perspectives of uh, parents. Parents must understand uh, the situations and the conditions of our children, lah. Because we used to give that one-way kind of directive instructions to our uh, daughters or son, and uh, they have to follow, you know. But maybe at this stage of development is the time for them to make uh, their own, you know, choice. But we uh, we are dead. Not saying that being indifferent or not supporting, we are there providing them information, giving them so-called suggestions, but not making decision for them. So uh, this is very important uh, as a parent, uh, as a students, as a individual students. I think it's very important to also to play the role like swapping position. Ah. So if I am a parent. I have a child at this stage of age, right? Choosing choosing a course or program, we need to understand how they feel. Also, mm. we need to we need to put our shoes on their uh, put put our uh, uh, foots on their shoes. You know, true, true. Uh, so that that so that we can feel how their worries, uh, their their they are so concerned about us and etc. So this uh, swapping role is very important, which can develop uh, this two way communication. Uh, so when two way communication happen then it will be more effective ah mm. there you go feels like i mean class all over again ah <laughs> speaking uh, one of the theories yeah, yeah. is one of the exercise yeah, talking yeah. to the other person to the chair i forgot S- switching the role oh, right? oh, oh, feel like, like class all over again <laughs> oh, you're a psychologist today yes, you uh, were <laughs> oh. huh okay so like the question that most people ask us in the social media is 
Okay, now they have studied this is the end of the first year. Okay, so now how to maintain that? What is the good, healthy lifestyle or like thing that they ha- they can do throughout their study period? Mm. That is good questions. Um, now people have been talking about sustainability, right? Yes. Uh, so if a student can sustain for one year, hopefully they can sustain for two years, three years, then until graduate. So. Uh, when we want to sustain our life, uh, we have to make sure our life to be balanced, you know, balanced uh, in terms of many aspects. Lah. So besides the academic aspect, uh, let's look at the academic aspects first. So students have to set their goal from very beginning of the semester, of the year. They have to set, for example, when come in, they need to have a good degree, let's say. So uh, they set a goal to have uh, 3.5 or 3.0 or 3.75 uh, at the end of their study so that they can get a, a good degree so that's his overall goal so from there they have to spe- uh, to be more specific uh, to special uh, what they call uh, to, to, to specify their goal into subjects so in order to get 3.5, uh, each semester there are five or six subjects. So what are, the sub- what are the grade need to be obtained for each of the subjects? So they go into it. So with this goal-oriented kind of thinking or planning can make their life more directed so that they can just always check according to their goal which has, has been set, especially for academic. For non-academic wise, maybe they have to be active, like what I mentioned just now, participative, and also join the clubs, programs, and not only academic program. Uh, we have PEC, you know, uh, in at MSU, uh, personal competence, so-called the uh, 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 program. So students can, in fact, obtain and also brush up their social skills, the soft skills. So th- those are important for them. What are the skills needed in their pro- in, in, in their program and also future career and etc. So with that goal oriented kind of like thinking, uh, they will be more guided and more directed. So that is one. Another thing is important is about being resilient. So resiliency is, is important, right? So facing challenges, uh, being resilient means they have to see problem, not as obstacles but they see problems as opportunity so that kind of thinking being positive think, thinker that is important so making it difficult one a negative one to be a positive one uh, so that they can sustain you know otherwise uh, there always be challenges everywhere right at at all stages across stages of life we, we face challenges so we have to um, make sure how to look at challenges as an opportunity that is that is important very well said how to look at challenges as opportunity mm-hmm. right so okay so like one of the questions that we also have and Dr. Ui right so our viewers have asked this question so mm-hmm. how can how can parents help their children who are feeling homesick and struggling to adapt while they are at home their children is far how can you help what can you say advice to the parents to the parents huh? okay I think parents we need to spend time to our student, uh, to to our children, especially uh, even they have not especially even they have grown up to this uh, stage. You know, uh, sometimes we we always think that oh now they are independent, they know what to do, they they can solve their own problem and etc. But at least in the day, if we have a quick check with them, five ten minutes. But this check is not like asking questions, getting information. This check must be so-called active. We say uh, we need to use active listening. When we listen, we not just listen to information. We listen to their feelings. We listen to their thoughts. We listen to the meaning. So from there, in fact, we can understand them better. So once we understood them, then only we can support them. But uh, what usually I used to do that also, uh, what usually we do, we get information, then we give comment or we give, we give advice. So it seems like not being uh, connected, you know, uh, being connected doesn't mean like, oh, uh, father, son, that's his connection. Uh, that, there must be 
uh, some kind of like psychological connection there you know then they feel it the feelings is important in that part so they feel it you feel you feel your child your child feel you <laughs> something like that right so that is important so uh-huh. we have to maintain that connection so when the child is away you can call them text them uh, once in a, a day at least then to to catch up with them I see so it's important eh? so much um, for example just as the students now are doing their groundwork of what course they want to find they're doing their you know filling up all their paperwork and so parents also have their own groundwork that they need to do mm. and starting this uh, repo at the early stage before their children go for those of the parents who are I put the students are still living with them that's actually a bonus right, right. but for those who are true quite a distant that is a challenge that we all true true quite have to you know, like one day face right kan? true. so we are at the very end for our segment with you okay. Dr. Oi so okay. any last words to everyone on our audience for those who are ready to come over to MSU I think uh, it's a good place for you and especially you have chosen the program that you you wish to be in and I think uh, not only taking uh, this opportunity being at uh, university to gain the degree or to, to gain the qualification but I think learning experience is very important Uh, participate in the program uh, whatever program which can give you a good experience and then from there you can learn a lot and then uh, besides getting the degree then you can get also uh, some invaluable kind of like experiences uh, throughout Thank you right. for joining us Dr. You're welcome. Oi You're welcome. Thank you very much Thank you. So that will be end the segment with Dr. Oi Now we'll be talking with our one of our successful alumni and so our final guest is is Nora Anissa Putri Binti Zailani our MSU alumni who have graduated from the Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Technology in the School of Pharmacy So Anissa will share her journey and give her motivation to all our students out there. So, welcome, Anissa. Thank you. Uh, Anissa, oh, Anissa, the happiest. Eh? Like, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Anissa, I know her back in the day when I was student as well. Huh, kan? So, Anissa, how are you? I'm great. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's really good. So, Anissa, what have you been up to now, Anissa? Eh, orang semua tak kenal Anissa. Anissa, let's talk about a bit lah sikit. Kita go back sikit. Where are you from, Anissa? Where wow. I'm from hmm. um, as, Like Where I'm from Asal ke Ya yeah, asal Oh asal Okay Actually I'm born in Negeri Sembilan hmm. But I'm raising in Shah Alam I see So like Since all our students out there Dia lebih ke ni semua Kita akan tak We are talking to SPM students Yang baru habis finish So like Which school for you, were you from Which okay. Where do you took your SPM Okay So um, I came from Sekolah Menengah Teknik Kuala Lumpur Which is located in Ceras Teknik Kuala Lumpur? Ya yeah, So you Kuala took Lumpur. I took engineering More to technical more engineering More to technical engineering And now yeah. you're doing pharmacy? Ya yeah. <laughs> Okay okay guys First question dah tahu dah How did you change From engineering to uh, pharmacy? Okay. I'm interested uh, I will just like Do a long short story um, Actually I'm When I'm in high school I was selected to do um, Technical Which is Um Like the lukisan kejuteraan and so on, and then but actually I'm into um into in science since I was a little, um but that's how their journey was. Um so I took um the engineering background in sekolah menengah teknik Kuala Lumpur, um and then after that I'm continue after getting my SPM result. Um it's it's actually um not really like capai my expectation lah in terms of the engineering. So I I I think that. I should do what I love So I talk to my parents Which is my mom and my late dad And also one of my brothers um, Along with my sister-in-law That I want to pursue something that I do really love And then uh, Alhamdulillah my my family is very supportive And then we just do some research and things and so on So and then came with the MSU actually hmm, So how do you decide MSU and its school of pharmacy? Actually I know about MSU since high school um, and then my brother also always mentioned that MSU is one of the private university that have excellent reputation and most of my brother's friend um, graduate from um, MSU get, like easily getting jobs and 
for Abang yeah. Anissa ni <laughs> Bagus lah For their Product of the year <laughs> For their Well known I can say that MSU is a well known university Which is having excellent reputation So um, When I um, Do some research Regarding the courses And I I also interest um, I have many interests In science So um, nah, That's why I choose Is there any specific Key influence Yang buat you ni About science ni Yang nak pakai pharmacy Science are very wide mm, Actually Okay, I was dream to be a doctor, uh. but it's not maybe it's not like um rezeki right to be a doctor because I did not take the biology subject. Mm. But and then I explore like pharmacy is something like unique courses because um usually um pharmacy is more like macam uh in apa orang lain kata belakang tabi punya kerja. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, pharmaceutical technology kan. Yeah, pharmaceutical, yeah, eh? pharmaceutical technology. So it relates with the pharmacy because I take um diploma in pharmacy. So that's why I want to choose pharmacy mm. instead of the other so, courses. So since we are talking to students at Manazo, they can see a better pathway eh, for the academic kan Anissa. You took diploma in pharmacy, right? Yeah. What make you change for example not taking bachelor in pharmacy kan but instead of bachelor of pharmaceutical technology uh, why the technology and not just a oh, bachelor in pharmacy okay the okay the, i just remember the story actually we actually i went to msu with my brother to the ad, academic advisor in msu yes. so um they also like um provide Uh, give, uh, give the brief explanation regarding the double degree program and also the the just the degree program and then um, my brother like encouraged me to take the the double degree program which is Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical and Technology as so, as long as um, with the Bachelor of Pharmacy so mm-hmm. I also think that it will be like um, more valuable knowledge for me because um, Um, it is the opportunity Like my brother also encouraged me My parents also encouraged me to do that So I decided to take Bachelor of Pharma- Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Technology And then Bachelor of Pharmacy I see So you're taking a double degree Yeah, double ah, degree So you're doing your first degree Which is the Bachelor of Pharma- Bachelor of Science of Pharmaceutical Technology here True And you're doing Bachelor in Pharmacy where? In uh, Universitas Elanga, Surabaya Ah, one of our part universities I see, Universitas Elanga So, so your double degree starts from here And then as well And what, what, How many years there? Um, in Surabaya, three years Three years, another three, three years, years. Hmm, Semangat nak belajar ke? <laughs> Okay, that's okay. very good, very good So from here to there So now let's go back a bit Kita rewind the clock back here in MSU How did the university, how did your school or your your faculty help you as the growth for your academic uh, time here? Okay. Um, actually, um, back then, uh, like personally, I was like really a timid person. A, a, oh, very uh, shy. Timid, yeah, yeah, very okay. shy. You know, like macam, like very scared to, to do something that I, maybe I scared um, because of, Maybe I have like um, low self-esteem after getting my SPM result because because I always think like, um, what if it didn't um, work out well for me? But I also kind of like person like like um, very determined person. If I really want to do, I want to do um, seriously. So I think MSU um, really shapes me in terms of the my um, personal growth and also in terms of the academic. Um, because um, I can see that I um, I learned a lot here since day one, um, since taking um, diploma in pharmacy and then going um, pursuing um, degree also in MSU, uh, my first degree. So it helps me a lot actually. Hmm. Since you said you were a bit timid before, kind mm. of very shy, would you have done this in your first year? <laughs> If I ask Anissa, we're having a talk to students. Can you do it with me? Mm, I would say I would just go for it. I, Even I, in your first year, wow. yeah, I want to try it. Next level. Okay, that's good. I just want to know because you were said you were very timid, but determined person. Yeah. So even if I ask you back in your diploma, you would do this. Uh, if I was as a git, I think I want to do. <laughs> that's good. That's the spirit. So uh, out people out there, don't be scared to take any opportunity. But go, that's a good example. Thank so you. off to our next question. Okay. Social media tanya soalan ni But This is a very I know it's cliche But it's important Because everyone has their own answer For this question Anissa They ask How do you balance uh, You are a very active student How do you balance Your academic life And your 
on the extracurricular activities and your private life. In terms of the balancing between academic and also extracurricular activities and my personal life, uh, I think the most important thing is time management skills. Mm. It's normal for us, um, actually, as a student, um, to procrastinate and so on. I like, see. Yeah, we we will be have like that phase. It's normal, but manage properly because. Uh, we doesn't want to mess up any things, right? In terms of the academic, um, extracurricular activities and also my personal life, uh, I think time management skill is very important. Like, I'm personally, I myself, I have like habit like jotting down all the things that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And also, I will jot down um, the event that I should go or any extracurricular activities that I have to um, settle. Mm-hmm. So, by that, I... I push myself like oh this is important so I have to um, complete my my task and everything so that I can do any, uh, do other things also two questions on that okay. number one do you prefer to write it down on your like a laptop or your iPad or, or physical paper okay actually I'm not like iPad girl I like more to paper per se actually but when um, like technology is getting like related to the technology right so I also need to learn of using like macam biasa kan diri like using on iPad right other things and also but um, at the same time actually I more prefer to jot down things on paper so you have, a, you have a diary or a journal lah ni yeah ni. okay so when you write down these things do you write it a night before or like in the morning which one do you prefer do you write down very in the early days or like that morning okay these are my to-do list which one do you do mm, I think I prefer more at night mm, I see so you wrote down a week worth or a day's worth um, a day a day's worth at least okay what I'm going to do tomorrow yeah so okay right, that's interesting okay let's keep the ball rolling I'm very dah dah panas dah dia dah very dah tak panas dah okay so ha, the next question is very interesting how did your time at the, our university right management and science university prepare you for your current you know livelihood or like current career because you're not working but you're still doing your double degree here right so how did it change you or affect you in such a way that you have because fun fact everyone can our Anissa here uh, recently graduated from our convocation and she just won an industry award is that is that right yeah true uh, industry award from her during her internship right? yes uh, <laughs> so how did that happen you know actually it's it's beyond my expectation I didn't really expect that because um, because um, doing internship while also pursuing my second degree it's difficult for me answering to the question for my personal um, opinion and my personal experience of um, being a, a, a MSC student I think my faculty and also our university is really helps me in terms of the um, provide the um, knowledgeable um, resources and reference where I can also always contact my lecturers, my faculty, um, my university regarding um, how I want to settle like internship study and so on. Apart from that, I think mentorship program also is one of instrumental for me to prepare for my studies, my my career, my future career and so on. Yeah. So you said just now you did your double degree and internship. So because I know that you have to go to classes. So that means you did your internship in Surabaya. Uh, no, actually, I have to complete my internship during my um, semester break. I see. Um, it was like my first semester break in um, Surabaya uh, after finish my final exam. And then um, my lecturer contacted me that, oh, you should um, complete your, your internship program on your semester break. And then I was like thinking, it was like very like a, a roller coaster process. Um, I complete my resume and so on I prepare I email them the company that my uh, my lecturer suggested to me um, and then I doing my internship on semester break here or that? Uh, in Malaysia in Malaysia in Malaysia my word <laughs> so that one okay that's very interesting okay what? so that's that's the, how was the experience that, for that one I was nervous actually because there is a um, long time didn't do internship my last time doing my internship um, during COVID at 
um, hospital for the diploma in pharmacy and then long time I didn't do internship for my um, degree. I was nervous actually but Alhamdulillah I, I'm grateful for the experience. The company uh, also was very, I would say a very um, systematic company management which I can learn a lot and um, my supervisor and other staff also was very supportive mm-hmm. in terms of teaching and providing guidance. In a way, although it's roller coaster, it's guided roller coaster lah. Okay, the uh, yeah. research, <laughs> smooth sailing last year. Yeah. Okay, so we have a lot of for those out there you know, know in MSU we have a very particular subject which is called personal enrichment skill subjects. You know that PEC. Yeah. Okay. What is your favorite PEC? Which one? Communication skills. Communication skills. What have you learned specifically in communication skills? In terms of the um, PEC communication skills, I learned a lot um, being um, briefly talking to other people, like in publicly, um, because um, during my, um, I think, final year doing my Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Technology, I, uh, I was um, joining a debate competition, which is out of my comfort zone. So by um, applying um, back what I learned in PEC communication skills, it helps me a lot to actually, yeah, talking publicly to people. Even though I'm kind of like introvert person, I like not really love talking much to other people. But when I um, went to MSU, it's provide like a lot of PEC, like, um, but uh, specifically I love communication skills. Covering for what you use you believe that you were like, okay, I, I'm quite having difficulties for this particular skill, so I want to really pursue it. I, I really like that. That's very good, you know. If you feel that you have something back in your high school, you feel like, oh, okay, this is something I'm quite, I do not have the opportunity to do it. I lack the knowledge or no experience in it. Now I'm the university and it provides it. Why not I do it? Right. True. I heard many stories before from my colleagues and others. They were doing. They never had a particular club sports in their school. They have now. We have it in university. They do it, and they represent our university. So, like, that's a very good, successful story that one could, you know, just venture through. All right. So, next question. All right. This is the camera. I want you to talk to the students out there. What advice would you give them who are planning to enter MSU? the younger all these new SPM graduates what would you say to them in okay. terms of choosing MSU okay so um, to future future SPM graduates uh, SPM graduates right? yeah, SPM yeah. graduates they finished okay, okay. Um, I think um, if you're choosing MSU it will be a very worthful um, learning experience and uh, if I would say um, the most important thing is stay out of your comfort zone, always eager to learning um, because you got the opportunity to pursue your studies, um, grab the opportunities, um, explore more because um, life is like um, we are all a lifelong learner. So just learn, um, experience it, whether it's a good or a bad lesson. Maybe you think a bad lesson, but actually um, uh, there's always like uh, things that you can learn from it. Mm, love it. A lifelong learner. That's a very good thing. Just because you finish your study at one particular time, for example, like secondary education, doesn't mean that's the end of it. Ah, could I be SPM done? Ah, could I be like No, there are many ways. You have. To, it's a very. It's a journey that you have to do it. A lifelong learner. Yeah. I really love that. So, what would you say? Okay, that is to those who are entering MSU. What do you have said to the younger self? The first year, Anissa, what would you have said to her? Mm, don't be scared. <laughs> because, yeah, um, it's normal to, to... Sometimes you didn't have confidence. But don't be scared. I would say, don't be scared. Just do it. Don't give up. No, it's like a Nike. Just do it. Okay, so... This will be the end of our session with you, Anissa. So do you have any final words you want to say to the, our audience out there, to the parents or students, mm. anyone out there? Okay, um, I think this is um, the advice that I got from my late dad because um, um, pursuing studies um, in Bachelor of um, Double Degree Programme 
which is Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Technology and Bachelor of Pharmacy is his dream and also my dream, basically our dream. Um, I would say he all um, he always um, advised me to be be sincere in everything that you do. It means that do just do your very best in everything that you do, whether it's your working, your studying, or anything, because um, sincere is really important when you want to do um, things so that um, inshallah it will be is um, it will be is by Allah yeah thank you Anissa for that very wonderful insight about thank you your journey here at Management and Science University I hope this uh, session would you know go through and all you know like literally make all the students you know feel Warm hearted and not join a mess you. Thank you once again. Thank Anissa. you so much. Alright, so me. that would be the end of our session for today for MSU Talk podcast. And I want to thank our incredible panelists for sharing all their insights, all their wonderful experiences. We hope this discussion would be enlightening for everyone out there. And thank you for listening for today's episode. Remember, this is a crucial time for everyone. So you know, explore your options, seek support and make informed decisions for your future. So if you have any other questions, you can reach out to us in all our social medias or even visit our website, msu.edu.my. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more insightful content. So until next time, take care and stay motivated.